impossible to precisely and accurately pinpoint ovulation it's really important to make sure that we do the best job we can to understand when ovulation is approaching so that conception attempts can be most effective really there is no real time way of tracking ovulation but there are some good processes that you can follow and there are some that are not so great especially if you have irregular cycles that's going to be something that is pretty important in those instances to understand what are the trends of your body you know personally i was diagnosed with pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome very early on in my life and had extremely irregular cycles for the first you know say from 18 to 28 and what enabled me to really understand my patterns and, nearly, and even to conceive when I wanted to was understanding that my cycle, instead of the usual typical 28 day cycle, was actually about 45 days long. And so, and there was a pattern. There was a pattern of how the cycle actually operated. I was ovulating at around the 30 to 30, between 30, day 30 and 33 or 35 actually. And so, in understanding that piece of information, I was able to time conception very, very effectively and end up conceiving first and second try with both of my children. So despite the fact that if I had not had this information, I would have probably been struggling with infertility for a whole lot longer. So this is critical information. And one of the things that's going to be really important is to understand that there is not one way to ensure that you track ovulation because of the fact that there is no real time in order to track. And most of the methods that you can use are going to be really having a retrospective analysis of what happened in previous cycles to be able to start to gauge what is likely to happen in future cycles. So let me explain what I mean. There are signs of fertility that occur and that happen throughout the month that signal impending ovulation. And often we're not very aware of those symptoms. You know, sometimes there's a heaviness around the ovaries or um, swelling of the lymphatic glands around the legs or a feeling of bloating or many other types of different symptoms that are unique to an individual. And so understanding, you know, doing a triangulation of different methods so that you can understand what are the things that occur or are likely to occur around the time in which you ovulate is important, is vital. There are four main methods that I love to have my patients do that are going to help me and them best understand their cycle. And this is what I also did. So body basal temperature uh, tracking, which is basically you are taking your temperature, you're charting it on a piece of paper or an app these days. I do love Fertility Friend, um, which is free. You can access it through fertilityfriend.com. That is going to be a fantastic way to be able to really see on paper or on screen what is happening for your cycle, okay? So that's something that's going to be, that is a foundation. And it was really something that I did, but it's something that I get all of my patients in the clinic to do because it gives us the best way, the best ability to correlate all of the other pieces that we're going to talk about. You know, the second thing that we want to be able to correlate within that cycle and, and body basal temperature track, tracking is cervical mucus. Mucus changes of, you know, the, the, the mucous membranes down in the reproductive areas is going to secrete differently throughout different parts of the month. And what happens during a preceding ovulation by typically one to two days, there is an increase in the amount of cervical mucus and in, its, in, in the texture it has. You know, very fertile mucus is egg white like. And so when you start to see that very stretchy, very kind of clear egg white like mucus, usually ovulation is happening one to two days after you start to see that kind of mucus, which, which happens one to two days prior to ovulation. The third thing is really to be able to triangulate your symptoms. You know, tr basically looking at what are, what are the kinds of symptoms that are normal and natural to you, you know, from the, um, from the, the kind of bloating that you feel or different types of, of 
preferences that change throughout the month you know some women feel like they want to consume more chocolate or you know there are lots of different nuances and changes that occur throughout those periods of time that is going to be important for you to note down on paper on the day that they happen so that you can really be able to understand how and when these things because you start to to really develop a pattern you start to see a pattern when you start to put it down on paper by trying to kind of remember you will forget it's like you know if I ask you what did you have for breakfast three weeks ago you're probably you know if you have a variety in your diet you're probably not going to remember but if you write it down you're much more likely or if it's if if the type of breakfast breakfast that you have relates to a particular event that happens every time in a week you know it might be that on a tuesday you have breakfast at work which will differ from when you have breakfast at home then of course you're more likely to remember but if you're just kind of going day to day it's going to be difficult to correlate so that's why it's important to put it down on an app on a piece of paper on something that you're tracking all of those things concurrently and the final thing is tracking the menstrual cycle itself so from day one of the cycle how many days did the period last and how many days until the next first day of the cycle those are the kind of four major things that you want to triangulate to start to be able to develop that pattern in addition to that there are other methods that you could triangulate but I would never use those other methods on their own because they really are going to be um, mis be misleading or not be giving you the full information if you don't really know what happens overall for you especially for me you know with PCOS in irregular cycles I would have many times throughout the month that I would have more stretchy and fertile based mucus but then it would stop and you know then everything would go back to when it was non-fertile and then start again and that would happen several times throughout the month until I figured out that I had about two or three of those events and then it was actually the real time in which I would actually be ovulating because the body might be trying to ovulate and goes through the motion doesn't do it and goes back to the beginning so again if you have irregular cycles in particular it's difficult to be able to correlate and pinpoint those those places within the cycle un unless you really are charting it and noting it down but OPKs and also which is the the um, the ovulation kits predictive kits they can be useful but often they're very expensive and not very effective on their own they will be positive and negative at the wrong times of the month and unless you know your symptoms and you have all of this other information you're not going to be able to really utilize it very well then of course there are fertility tracking devices typically those methods are very expensive for the fact that you can just get a piece of paper a thermometer and do it for yourself okay so getting to practice and of course blood tests are retrospective okay so if your doctor sends you to have a progesterone test really what they're looking at is when you ovulated and typically that, that test is only going to be positive if ovulation happens seven days before the test actually happens because that's when your progesterone levels peak so it's not really going to be a very good way to prospectively understand what's happening in terms of ovulation to be able to pinpoint it and time it effectively so my message short summary is get started with track, tracking your basal body temperature your symptoms and your cervical mucus as well as the, the length of your menstrual cycle to be able to understand what's happening in your menstrual cycle in general and of course to be able to start pinpointing ovulation in a better way until next time bye for now